Welcome to the First Home Show podcast, created for first home buyers. I'm your host, Melissa Barlas. I'm a property lawyer, owner and founder of PropTech Legal, and I've been a first home buyer myself. In this podcast, I'll share with you in up to 10 short minute increments what you need to know as a first home buyer, and I'll share with you legal tips on how to purchase your first home successfully. Now, don't go it alone in the property market. We at PropTech Legal are here for you. the second episode of The First Home Show. I'm your host, Melissa Barlas, and thank you for taking the time to tune in. I really appreciate it. So there are properties out there that you look at and you go, that house is so pretty. I can see myself raising my kids there. Or that apartment looks really stylish, looks so new and renovated. But what if there's actually something wrong with it? How would you know if, for example, the new paint job that you're seeing in a five-year-old apartment is a result of uh, water ingress that's emanating from dodgy plumbing in the building, for example? Or how do you know if behind the walls of a house there's termites crawling everywhere? And actually just saying that is making my arms shiver so bad. So that's where a building and pest inspection comes in handy. So a qualified inspector will know exactly what to look for and they'll be able to see through any cosmetic improvements that cover up defects and other sorts of nasties that may be wrong with the property. So in this podcast, I'm going to explain to you the benefits of getting a building and pest inspection done and the best time to do it and why. I'll explain how you arrange a building and pest inspection. And then lastly, I will talk about just some other inspections and checks that is worth doing uh, to a property before you buy specific in Victoria. So the first thing that I want to talk about is when is the best time to get a building pest inspection done? Now, I always recommend to my clients, get a building and pest inspection done before you buy a property. But when you hear that, you might think, but what if the seller, you know, doesn't accept my offer, for example? Literally in that scenario, I've wasted my money on a property that I probably won't even get. That's why I always recommend to clients just, and and what I recommend to you as well, is just ensure that the seller is, has accepted your offer or is at least really open to your offer before you invest the money in getting a building and pest inspection done. Because that way, that way it will actually be worth your money. So why is it important to get the building inspection done before you buy? There's two key reasons. So the first is it does actually make for a great bargaining tool to determine the price that you would be offering based on the structural integrity of the property or even the cost to rectify defects. So you might want to offer a little bit of a lower price for a property if you can see in the report that it's going to cost X amount to rectify certain major issues with the property, for example. And the second reason is that a building and pest inspection report provides clear evidence of what the condition of the property was like right at the beginning of the transaction. So if any damage happens to the property before settlement, for example, you can compare the damage to the original condition at the beginning of the transaction that's specified in the report to prove that there has been a change to the condition of the property. And because you've been able to prove that change, you can require the seller to fix the damage before settlement. Unless, of course, the contract specifies otherwise or limits your rights in that regard, at least you'll have a better chance of being able to get the seller to fix the damage before settlement if you can actually prove through the use of a building report that there's actually been a dilapidation of the property or a change in the condition of it. Now, the reality is it can be a hot market out there at times. So that means you might not have the time to arrange the building pest inspection after your offer has been accepted by the seller. If you find yourself in this boat where a lot of us do, 
The next best approach, I say, is just to negotiate for the contract to be made conditional upon you getting a building and pest inspection report. Now, I recommend that the contract allows you at least 14 days from the sale date to get the building and pest inspection report, and it should also allow you to end the contract if the report discloses any major structural defects or any major uh, pest infestation. So how do you negotiate to make the contract conditional on getting the inspection report? My suggestion is that you have your conveyancing lawyer carefully draft out the clause as part of their advice to you to ensure that the clause is carefully constructed um, and clearly sets out your rights in the event of any major defects or major pest infestation. And then what your conveyancing lawyer can do next is negotiate with the seller's conveyancer to insert the clause into the contract to make it conditional on you getting the inspection report. And then if the seller is agreeable to that clause getting put into the contract, then happy days, you'll get an updated contract with the clause in there that you can proceed with signing if everything else looks okay. But you just need to be aware that a seller, you know, there's no guarantee that a seller is going to agree to make a contract conditional on getting a building and pest inspection report. And that is a reason in and of, in and of itself for why you should get the inspection report before you buy. So how do you arrange a building and pest inspection? Well, you've got a couple of options. You can arrange a building and pest inspection yourself, which a lot of people do. Uh, or you can engage us to do it for you uh, as an additional service and just for a bit of added convenience so you're not doing it yourself. So you might be asking yourself at this point, well, how much does a building and pest inspection actually cost? I want to make a really important point when it comes to inspections and fees. An inspector's fee is small, compared to the cost you would incur if you bought a property that had a ton of unforeseen problems with it or defects. A fee by the inspector is assessed based on the size of the property. So the smaller the property, the lower the cost because there's less square meterage, right? But as a general guide, I've seen inspectors charge, you know, between four to 600 for, you know, an inspection of a property in a metro area in Victoria uh, that has four bedrooms or five bedrooms and two bathrooms, for example. If the property is located closer to the city or if you've bought an apartment and there's over, you know, 100 lots in the building, then an inspector can charge you a little bit more. So just be aware of that. But if you engage us to arrange the inspection, we'll provide you with the quote and give you an opportunity to accept the, the, the quote before the inspector then arranges the inspection. So who can perform a building inspection? Now, a building inspector needs to be property, properly qualified and trained and insured. So ideally, they should hold a diploma in building and construction or surveying. So just look out for that and maybe ask that question. And they should also have professional indemnity insurance, which is really important for them to have in place just in case they miss a problem that needs to be fixed and you need to rely on the insurance to make a claim for you know, any loss you might have, might have incurred because they've missed that issue. The inspector should also be experienced. So just look for a registered, qualified and trained builder, for example, or an en engineer to do the inspection for you because they're the best professionals to go in and look at the structural integrity of a property. The next point I want to discuss is, well, what does an inspection report look like? So a written report will list things like you know, any defects in the property or signs of any structural problems like uh, like large cracks in the walls that could be evidence of the, the house sinking, for example, which, which might require restumping of the house later on, which can be a bit costly. Or it might even show uh, blisters or bubbles in the paintwork, which can actually indicate termite activity. So I don't know if you've ever been in a house or an apartment that's a bit old and you see the blisters or the bubbling on the wall. That's usually in an indication of termites. So there you go. Uh, it can list 
you know, uh, defects that need to be rectified and how urgently they need to be rectified. And some reports can also contain how much repairs will likely cost if something needs to be fixed. So what I would say is don't assume that all of that is going to be in the report. I'm just giving you examples of what I've seen in my time over the many years in this industry. I would always suggest that you, when you contact the inspector, that you request for all of those things that I've listed to be in the report, just to ensure that you're getting the most value for money. So what other inspections or checks are important before buying a property? This is the last thing I want to mention and talk about. So if you find a property that's built before 1990, for example, Consumer Affairs Victoria suggests that you get an asbestos assessment done before you buy. So I recommend that you visit the Asbestos Victoria website just for a bit more information on how you arrange that assessment. And their website is www.asbestos.vic.gov.au. If there's any renovations or extensions done in the last 10 years, you should also call the council and just speak to the building and the planning department just to see if any building permits or occupancy permits or certificates of final inspection have been issued in respect of any work done in the last 10 years at the property, or indeed if they haven't actually gotten those um, permits and certificates uh, and should have. Uh, in that situation, just be aware that from the sale date, you're actually liable for any illegal work that was done to the property. Hence why it's so important to call the council and ask those questions. The other check that you should do about a property is whether the property has any non-compliant combustible cladding, which is an important issue in Victoria. Highly recommend that you call the council and the Victorian Building Authority and also the Owners Corporation if the property is an apartment or townhouse or unit, just to confirm if there's any investigations that have been launched into non-compliant combustible cladding. Uh, you know, if any building notices or orders have been issued to have the cladding rectified so that it's compliant. Or even when you call the owners corporation, for example, you can also ask the question of whether there's any additional levies that they're going to raise in future uh, to fund the cost of any rectification of non-compliant combustible cladding or to even fund proceedings against the original contractor that was hired to lay the cladding, for example. So, just make those inquiries because they're really, really important. And if you engage us to perform a comprehensive contract review, we can actually advise you on all the necessary checks that you should do before you buy in Victoria. Well, that is a wrap for the second episode of the first home show. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the importance of arranging a building a pest inspection before buying your first home or even if you've bought before and you don't find yourself doing it too often you will find value in this episode and I hope you have and I hope that as you step into your first home buying journey this episode has helped you just get a little bit more confidence and knowledge on what you can do to help you decide on buying the right property for you. And I just hope that you can reflect upon this episode and just feel like you're supported by a professional out there that's got your back. And that's definitely how we approach our relationships with our clients. So as a final note, I'll leave you with this inspiring quote from real estate expert, Michael Ferrara. And he says that success in real estate starts when you believe you are worthy of it. I believe you're worthy of it. And I wish you the best of luck on your property journey. And I'll see you next time on the First Home Show.